Hello, I'm Hallelujah Brony, and today, I'll- I have something extremely important to tell you about the future, and I only have a few seconds, so you've got to listen. Whatever you do, don't waste your time worrying about... <sighs> wow, people in ponies sure can do some regretful things when stressed out and enveloped by anxieties. Looks like Twilight Sparkle's experience is more than just a bad hair day in this episode. And today, I'll be taking Twilight's actions and morals conveyed in Season 2, Episode 20, titled It's About Time, to conduct a analytical comparison to relevant scripture from the Bible about how to cope with anxious thoughts. So, you may ask, why am I doing this? Everybody raves about the future, including me, and in fact, there are actually over 25 million people that live in the U.S. that actually suffer from at least one anxiety disorder in the United States and I personally have two very close friends that suffer from panic attacks and if you are prone to anxieties you are not alone and I know there's so much wisdom found in the Bible and when you compare that to the experiences of Twilight in this episode I know that we can all learn a lot from this and that's why I'm talking about this that's why I think it's worth it so let's begin the problem is, I just finished planning my schedule for the month, but I forgot to leave time to plan for next month. Don't you see? There's no time in my schedule to put together another schedule. I could move my meeting with the Ponyville Hay Board to the following Tuesday, but then I have to reschedule my lunch with Pinkie Pie, and you know what a nightmare she is with scheduling. This is an absolute disaster. My whole year could be thrown off. And I woke up from an ice cream dream for this. I admire Twilight's organizational capabilities, and you know, I personally could learn a lot about how to better schedule my week. And her troubling thoughts may seem quite comical, but everyone has their anxieties, and though they are quite irrational, they are real to her. And it is unfortunate that small worries could easily escalate if left unchecked. A wise person once said, Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And... And would it surprise you that it was Jesus who said that in Matthew chapter 6, verses 27? It's funny that I know this verse, and yet I still sometimes spend so much time worrying, and I just wish I could go back in time and handle that situation more effectively. Wait, that sounds awfully familiar. So in comes Twilight from the future with the intention to remind herself not to worry about worrying but only to convey a half-completed paranoid message about a supposed impending disaster. And you know, she initially starts out handling the situation quite well and in a very proactive way, displaying her greatest gifts in leadership and administration, organizing a massive preventative campaign around Ponyville, and I would personally argue that I think it served the town pretty well, and it probably prevented a lot of future problems. And it did prepare them for handling some really bad breath. Woohoo! That was one smelly wet dog. Oh yuck. She was in her element because she was calm and collected, so she knew how to handle the situation. Then a series of accidents that were beyond her control began to change her physical appearance to resemble the post apocalyptic twilight. It's at this moment when she starts to panic and she desperately tries to regain control of the situation but her sense of control is evaporating and yet her desperate and radical attempts to squeeze an ounce of, the, an ounce of control of the situation only cause her physical disfigurements one by one whilst the shadow of powerlessness looming engulfing in the madness. Ah. Ah. Wow, this whole anxiety thing sure is... Exhausting. <sighs> Twilight's desperate attempt to change the future not only showed how powerless she was against them, it also showed that she's also powerless against her own anxieties. And Twilight's anxiety sure is terribly strong. You get it? You get it? Terribly strong? Huh? Anyone? And, and it's not just in stories. People in real life can do the same thing. But what does scripture remind us to do when we are being consumed with irrational fears of the future like the one Twilight faced? One of the most honest and vulnerable uh, chapters of the Bible that I've ever read is found in Psalm 139. And though I'd love to share the entire chapter with you, I'm just going to read verses 23 and 24. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. 
Test me and know my anxious thoughts and lead me in your way everlasting. He really opens up about his anxieties and King David, he, he's the one who actually slayed Goliath and yet he's being this open and this vulnerable with others. If he can do that, then, it, then I have no excuse to do the same. King David shows us that our anxious thoughts can sometimes cause us to lose focus on the big picture in life. And when we confess to God and to our trusted friends, then we can start addressing the fears and better learn how to manage what we fear the most. And besides, to cope with your fears, you first have to acknowledge them first. Isn't that right, Scootaloo? And to add to that, it's stated in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it declares, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And you know, it can be very easy uh, to ask for what we need in hard times. But w honestly, what can Twilight be thankful for, even in the midst of her worrying? I'm convinced that her heart is in the right place, and her fears were driven to save the people that she loves in Ponyville from a catastrophe. And another thing is that she has her friends like Spike and Pinkie Pie that speak sense to her. But more importantly, they make time to be a good friend, making sure that she doesn't face all her fears alone. Because, you know, a true, true friend helps a friend in need. Can I get an amen? Near the end, Twilight Sparkle finally realizes that. But I do know one thing. I look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and it's all because I couldn't stop worrying and let the future handle itself. And remarkably, Jesus said nearly the same thing during the Sermon on the Mount. And it is written in Matthew 6, verse 34. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough problems of its own. Oh, what a good reminder. And we all have been given breath to breathe, and each breath is a gift. And yet, when we, yet we all sometimes forget to breathe. <sighs> Just like that. Just remember to embrace each moment because when we preoccupy our mind with the small things, with a grateful heart, you know, then those small ways in life will start to lose its power. Although those problems won't go away, it's still a good way to manage them. And for the moral of the episode, Twilight states with resoluteness that... From now on, I'm going to solve problems as they come, and stop worrying about every little thing. That's great! Does that mean there won't be any more late night pacing? No more late night pacing. If only I had learned this lesson a week ago, we wouldn't have had to go through all this. Taking things day by day is a good lesson for everybody to know, but I feel the Bible provides a more powerful strategy to practice in order to cope with those anxieties. Cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. That's what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. This verse means that when I practice swallowing my personal pride and humbly handing over all of my burden-filled worries to his divine power, that means all the other weights that immobilize my mind and my body are undone, gone. And it never did me any good anyway. And it's a constant process. And... Does this make sense to you? Here's an open letter to you. Dear God, thank you so much for the show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Today, after watching Twilight Sparkle in the episode It's About Time and studying relevant scripture about anxiety and worries, I learned that when problems present themselves, no matter how serious or overwhelming they may be, I can still control my own actions, but for everything else, I also must practice surrendering everything else that is beyond my control. Our brokenness shape who we are, however, it does not define us. So no matter what you're feeling right now, if you believe that every breath is a gift, just imagine the size of the treasure that you have, and don't let anyone take that away. So in other words, no one is perfect, and I, am, well, and I can be happy and less stress when I accept my past, manage the present, and make prudent plans for the future. So Spike, what do you have to say about that? I thought the stomach gig would be future Spike's problem. But now I am future Spike. Oh. The 
<laughs> Come on, future Spike. Let's get you home. So in conclusion, you should know that remembering quotes from the Bible won't prevent panic attacks and it won't prevent you from worrying about the future. And it certainly is not a substitute for treatment. But I must say there is great power in those scriptures and it can assist you to remain positive and encouraged even in the midst of uncertainties. So thank you so much for viewing today. Can you relate to Twilight's anxieties in this episode? I pray that you are shown you are not alone in your worrying and that you are reminded that there is a peace that transcends all understanding. And when viewing this, do you, did you think of someone that could really benefit from watching this message? Because it is my goal to inform and encourage all of my viewers by discussing parallels between lessons from MLP and the teachings of biblical scripture, just like I did today. Well, this is Hallelujah Brony signing off. Until the next video, my dear friend, get out there and be a blessing. <laughs>